Hello and welcome to Tuesday's edition of Cracking the Cryptic, uh, where I think the first thing I should do actually is apologise about yesterday's main video. I know a number of you were uh, nonplussed by the level of the sound in that video, as were we. We have no idea why it happened. Uh, it didn't seem to be a problem with the recording at our end, but every time we re-recorded it and loaded it up to YouTube, it had this bizarre volume spike in it at about one minute and three seconds or one hour and three minutes into the into the video and that meant YouTube was trying to sort of reduce the volume of the whole video to cater for that volume spike and that's why none of you could hear the video unless you had extremely powerful speakers and you were prepared to risk being sort of blown across the room whenever an advert appeared so we're really sorry we did stay up incredibly late I think I got to bed this morning at 2 45 a.m. trying to fix it for you um, we did release um, you'll see we split the video in half and that seemed to solve the problem for some reason that is not understood by me but there the video is now available and if you want to see me get humbled in all my glory and in full Dolby surround sound you now can. Um, now what puzzle are we doing today? We are doing a puzzle by Akash Dulani, uh, the Indian solver and setter uh, and this is from his new book. He's got a new book out called the World of Sudoku. Let me show you it. It looks very very smart. He's actually sent me a copy of this. I've had a look through it. Uh, I very much like the look of it. It's all handcrafted puzzles, which you know I approve of, all by a cache, so I approve of that too. Um, and indeed, it's I think it's a bit of a bargain, to be honest. It's available on Amazon now for £6.02 in the UK. I have no idea where the two pence comes from. But anyway, it's um, yeah, it looks a lovely collection of puzzles, and we're going to try one today. Um, one of the other things I liked about the book was that... Um, Freddie Hand, the genius young solver from the UK, has solved every puzzle in the book. And uh, in the book, you can see Freddie's time for every puzzle. So if you fancy yourself as a bit of a speed solver, you can um, you can be put in your place because you can look at Freddie's times and go, OK, well, that's all. That seems a bit silly. Or perhaps you can you know some of you out there may be competitive now if you are and you say this puzzle for instance today Freddie's time for this this is one of the longest times in the book was 12 minutes 51 seconds so if you do get close to that time let us know in the comments because you probably are an internationally uh, ranked solver um, now what, anything else I want to mention before we, we have a look at this uh, no I just mentioned that I mean the book consists of lots of varieties of Sudoku as well so we're going to look at an XV Sudoku in today's video but there's Thermo Sudoku, Odd Even Sudoku, Killer Sudoku it's a very nice collection um, now here we go let me read you the rules what have we got today we have got normal Sudoku rules apply if the sum of digits in orthogonally adjacent cells is 10 then they are separated by an X so you can see in the grid we've got lots of X's um, so if a domino has an has an X in the middle of it we know the two cells in the domino add up to 10 if on the other hand two orthogonally connected cells have a V between them they add up to 5 now I think when I was putting this in the software I only remember there being one V in this puzzle so there is just this cell and now we get to the important thing about XV Sudokus. All possible X's and V's are marked. And that means that if two cells um, are not separated by an X or a V, then they cannot add up to 10 or 5 respectively. And this negative constraint tends to be incredibly important in terms of solving this sort of puzzle. So do give it your full attention. Now if you want to have a go, and I recommend it, click the link under the video as usual. And with that, I get to play. I'm on new software today, so hopefully this will go well, and hopefully uh, you'll all be able to try it soon. Um, and with that, let's get cracking. Um, now, let's get cracking. So there are two places my eyes are drawn straight away in this puzzle. One is this connection of three, sort of three dominoes that each have an X between them, which means that Whatever we put into one of these dominoes gets propagated throughout this Tetris shape. Um, you know, so if this was one nine, this would have to be one nine, and this would have to be one nine. And for that reason, we know. In fact, we know. Let's start here. Let's start here because I've just noticed something. We, if we look along row three, we know that this domino cannot be 
4, 6 or 1, 9. And therefore none of the dominoes can be. Now this domino here can't be 2, 8 because of the 8 in column 7. So we actually know straight away that these are all 3, 7 because that's the only way remaining of making 10 in two cells. And there's a 7 there. So in fact we go 3, 7, 3, 7. Right, and then, well, this is going to help a little bit, to be honest, with the other place my eyes were drawn at the start, which is this box, where we've got a one and a four in the box, but there are two X related dominoes. So we know these dominoes are not one nine and they're not four six. Well, there are only two other ways that we could, we could go. Three seven, and this one can't be three seven because there's a seven here. So this must be three seven. And with the seven here, we actually know the order which means this one is two and eight. Ah, now, now look, we can do more with this box. We can do more by considering the fact that we have to place a nine in the box and we haven't yet. And this negative, look, the negative constraint comes into its own because of this one. I can't put a nine in either of those cells because if I do, they will add up to 10 and yeah, it should have an X between us. So this square here has got to be a nine. These two are five and six to complete the box. And we can continue with negative constraints because if that, if this square is a six, this one here, if this one was a six, sorry, let me show you. If that's a six, this clearly adds up to 10 um, and it should have an X. So it doesn't add up to six, which means we get most of this box done straight away and I'm absolutely certain that this wasn't what held up Freddy during the solve. He would have got all of this in about two seconds flat. Uh, now nines have got to live in one of those squares by Sudoku. Let's do some Sudoku. Fives have got to be up there. Um, this cell must be a bit restricted because we've got five cells in the row. We need one two, six, and eight. Ah, okay, look, there's something interesting here. This square is orthogonally adjacent to this two, eight pair. So it can't actually be, in fact, the same is true of this square. Neither of these squares can be a two or an eight. Now, why is that? Well, it's because if I put a two or an eight into either of those squares, obviously I connect them and there's no X on the borders. So, this square cannot be two or eight and must be one or six. So this square must be nine or four because of the X connecting these two cells together. Ah, right. So we can use the nine, the one nine trick again on row three because the one can't go here because then it would connect to a nine. So the one must be in this domino here, which means there's a one at the top of the grid. Six, six goes into one of those cells from by Sudoku. Ah, now that, that's interesting because of the four. This four, oh, actually there's loads. This four actually leads to lots of logic. Well, let's look at this four because where does the four go in this box over here? Well, it doesn't go there because there's a four in the row. Well, can it go here? Well, it can't go there because of the X clue. If it goes there, the six would have to be above it and the six can't be above it. So the four must live in the same three cells that the one lives in. And why is this a problem? Well, because things you learn on cracking a cryptic, one plus four equals five. And there's no V connecting any of these dominoes. So if this square is a one, you can see it would then have to be next to a four. If it's a four, it's gonna to have to be next to a one. So this square cannot be a one or a four, which means these two squares are a one four pair. This is one of the things I love about XV Sudoku. It's just so interesting. You get these little relationships that pop up all the time and I normally miss most of them, but at least I found this one today. So this X now, well, 
we can see immediately this now can't be six because if it's six, I need to put the four there and I can't. So the six goes there and this must be a two eight pair. So now my eyes are drawn to row two because this two eight pair in row two means I know the composition of these three central cells. They're gonna to have to consist of four, six and nine. Whoops, it's not zero, six, and nine. Where does the zero come from? Um, so let's just have a think about it. So, oh, this is gorgeous. Again, it's the same as the one four. If we make this square a four or a six, it will connect to its friend on one side. So this must be a nine, which means this this domino is not four six anymore because that would create three four sixes in the column. So this square is a one, this square is a nine, this is not one, this has to be two or eight, complete the row. So this square down here now, you can see it can't be four six or one nine. So this has got to be either three seven or two eight but this square is connected with a five so this is a seven or an eight uh, so this is a two three version of a five and there's a two up here gorgeous so three two eight these dominoes are now interesting i'm not sure i'm sure i need to focus more up here but while i'm spotting stuff down here let's continue with it three two here you can see i've got two more ten dominoes and i can't use two eight or three seven so these are one nine and four six. That one can't be nine because of the column. So that one can't be one. That one can't be nine. So that one can't be one. Um, okay. Oh, ah, look, there's a little trick we can do on row eight. And that is to ask where five goes. Remember, you could never put a five on a 10 domino because if you did, you'd have to put another five in and that is definitely gonna break the rules of Sudoku. So this square here is not a five. That square there is not a five. So this square here is a five, which means there's a five in one of those two cells. Uh, Three is in one of these two cells by Sudoku. That's those threes interacting. We're actually, we're sort of churning through the, that square can't be a four. Now this is a one. If this is a four, it's connected and that would have a V between it. So that's a six, that's a four. So this isn't four now, so this isn't six now. Okay, three's got to go up there somewhere. There's got to be a two or an eight up there as well. Okay, now I'm stuck. Um, it's been a reasonable start, but uh, this, this domino, yeah, look, that's got three seven ruled out by its, the three in its box. 1, 9, and 4, 6 ruled out in its column. So this is 2, 8, and there's a 2 there. So 2, 8. 2 must live in one of those cells. 8 must live in one of those two cells. Ah, no, 8, sorry. Look, we've got a 2, 8 pair there. So that can't be 8. This is 8. Ah. Oh. <laughs> sorry, sorry, there's a three here. It's next to a two or an eight. That's an eight. It can't be a two because that would add up to five. So that's a two, this is an eight, this is a two, this is an eight. And now we actually know that these three squares here have got to be two, three, and five. Ah, and there we go again. Two, three, and five. We've got to keep the two and the three apart because if we don't, we need a V in there and there are no Vs. So the five must play gooseberry. Um, sit between the two and the three. The three here tells us the order, three and the two. 
now there's a three in one of those two cells. Okay, and can we keep going now? There's a two in one of these three cells. I can't go there because it would be next to an eight. There's an eight in one of these two cells as well. So this, this domino could be two eight. It's either two eight or four six. You can see one of those must be true. Just trying to see whether the negative constraint helps us. I'm not sure that it does. This column, we need four, five, and seven, none of which add up to a useful total. So I don't think we get anything from this. This domino here has got to be one, nine, or three, seven. One, nine, or three, seven. Oh dear, I think we've ground to a bit of a halt now. Um, column one, we've got, in this column, we need three, four, seven, and nine. Ah, seven, of course, just by Sudoku. We get a seven down there. Ah, this is... This is in, this is interesting. Look, seven's here and here on box eight. So where does the seven go? It's got to be in one of those two cells. Oh no, of course, if it goes here, I don't have to put the three here. If it goes there, the three would go down there. Ah, sorry, I thought I might be able to do something with the three, but I can't. So seven is up here. So seven is here by Sudoku. Well, that is helpful though, because it rules out three, seven from this domino. Oh goodness. Um, so we get one nine here. That's helpful. That gives me the four and the one. So those two squares now are a pair. And there are two, three pair. Okay. Feel like I should. I feel, I feel like I'm staring at an, a negative constraint here and not spotting it. Uh, I don't know where it is. Sorry. Anyway, I'm, I'm tempted to have a look at this triple because I, at least I know what's in it. This has got to be three, four, and nine. So let's have a look at that. Three, four, and nine. Oh, that's a four, therefore, because there's a three, nine in the row. So, and this nine means we get the nine and the one over there. That gives us the nine and the three, look. So three must be in one of these two cells. So immediately I get this, I'm asking questions like, where, where's the seven going? In fact, the set up, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Where is the seven going? That is a good question. Well done, Simon. Where does the seven go in this box? Because this seven here means it can't go in any of those cells. So it's locked into one of two positions. Now, if the seven goes here, because of, we now know the three would have to go here, I would connect them in a domino relationship that adds to 10, which I must not do. So the seven goes here. This now is a three, this is a two, and that's rather nice. You can delete that one. Th ah, three must be in one of those two cells by Sudoku. Well, it can't be next to the two, so it must go up there. That means we do get a three here, which is keeping it well away from the seven in box eight. Okay, so maybe I'm tempted to look at this row because I've got so much in it already. I need two, five, and six. So this square is a five or a six. I can't see how to resolve that. This square is a, ah, this square is a two or a six and there's a three next to it. So that's a six, because if it's a two, that adds up to five. Lovely, six, five, this is a two. 
this 6 fixes this square is not a 6, so that's an 8, that's a 2. Oh, I still have I still not got this domino resolved. I don't think I have. I need I need maximum score in snooker into the open squares there. One four seven, ignoring the free ball. Um, one four seven. One ah yeah yeah yeah. This is good though. One four seven is a useful total because if this is not a seven, if this is a seven, the one and the four will connect and they add up to five again. So this is a seven. It's amazing what this constraint yields. It really is. It's it's just when it's done well like this, it really is a very enjoyable puzzle type. I have to say, two, four, and five. Oh no, no, no. Two, four, and six into those squares. So two is locked into that one by Sudoku. This is a four-six pair. Now maybe there's a negative constraint we can use. I'm sure. <laughs> I bet there is. Um, I can't see it. I'm am so, sorry if it's there. I'm just not spotting it. No, I'm, I I don't I don't think it's there. This square's got to be one. F ah, okay. Well, it's not there, but I, maybe I can use this instead because again I've got to keep these from adding up to five. That means one of these must be a six, and that means this square is a four. That's a six. This is not six, so this is not four. Well, that's not four either. This is a one six pair. Is that surely that resolves it? No, maybe not. So these are four, five, and nine in some order. Now, four, five, and nine, no matter how I perm them, they don't add up to five or ten. So I don't think I don't think I can use this triple to determine what's going on here. I think I've got to look somewhere else. Um, one, four, five, seven. This has got to be. This has got to be one, five, or seven. It's not eight. I don't know why there's an eight still in there. There's definitely a one look in one of those two cells. That's 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 important though for this square. Oh, you see, when I focus on, oh, in fact, this four is also important for this square because that's ruling out this square from being a one. Um, but ignore this square for a moment. Once you see there's a one in this domino, you now know that this can't be a four because it would force a one here. So that's what I was looking at. I wasn't looking at the thing that was straight in front of my eyes. Um, this is a four in here now. In fact, this is this is just a four, isn't it? So that's a five, that's a seven, that's a five, that's a five. And I'm not gonna beat Freddy's time by quite a long way, but it's not too bad given I'm talking through the puzzle as I'm going. This is eight, this is six. One of those two squares is six. One of those two squares is nine. These two squares have gotta be a one, four pair. The six is rather cool regarding this, because if this is a four, that would add up to 10. So it mustn't be one, four goes like this. That fixes the six and the nine as well for the same reason. This domino would add to 10 unless this is a nine. It's a very good puzzle, Akash, very good indeed. Um, now, surely now that can't be five. That's a four, nine pair, so this is five. This square now can't be a four, that's a nine. That's a four, and that finally, I'm sure there's been other ways of doing it, but that does seem to resolve these last question marks in the, the bottom of the grid. That's what I'll do, I'll check. The computer says it's okay, and that's how to solve it. So I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Do let me know your times in the comments, and I really hope you can hear the volume on this video. <laughs> See you later on on Cracking the Cryptic.